Now my screen is visible, yeah? Yes, ma'am. Okay. See. We, everyone knows the Bhagavad Gita means the dialogues between Krishna and Arjuna. Okay. But we have to go in detail here as per our syllabus. So, so first we will see the what is the syllabus is there. The syllabus of Bhagavad Gita. First we will go through the introduction. Means general introduction of Bhagavad Gita. Here uh, in short we are calling BG. BG means Bhagavad Gita. The definition of Bhagavad Gita and their relevance and scope. The essential of Bhagavad Gita, its meaning of term of Atma Swarupa and Sthita Pradna. Sankhya Yoga, which is the chapter second. Karma Yoga, chapter third. Then Sannyasa Yoga and Karma Swarupa. Karma Swarupa means there are types of karma. That is a Sakama Karma and Nishkama Karma. So we will see this Karma Swarupa also. This is a most important topic like a Sankhya Yoga. Then we we'll see the Sannyasa Yoga, Dhyan Yoga in chapter six, uh, sixth. Nature of Bhakti. There is a twelfth chapter is there. Twelfth uh, chapter is there uh, in Bhagavad Gita known as a Bhakti Yoga. So we in the chapter we will see the Bhakti Yoga, uh, the nature of Bhakti, the means and goal of Bhakti Yoga. Trigunas and the model of the modes of prakriti. There are three kinds of faith. Then we will see the food of yoga sadhaka, classification of food, which is mentioned in chapter uh, 14th and uh, 17th. Then daivasura sampada vibhag. This is a sampada. Sampada means wealth. Daivasura. Daiva means God. And asura means rakshas. We know the daiva means good and asura means bad. So daiva asura sampadvibha, which is a good and which is a bad. We will differentiate in this uh, vibhag, means we are divided in this chapter, which is known as a daiva asura sampadvibha, which is the chapter 16th. And the last chapter known as a moksha sannyasa. So today we will see only general information means general introduction definition of yoga and the importance of the different chapters bhagavad gita first see, uh, i told you bhagavad gita is divided this word is divided into the two part bhagavad and gita bhagavad means bhag and vad means bhagavad also is divided into two bhag and vad bhag means bhagavan and Vada means told, means which Gita, Gita means we know the song, actually Gita means the uh, Gyan, Gyan means to know about the things. So Gita means the Gyan which is given by the God, In but in simple way we know Bhagavad Gita means a song of God. The song of God means it is sung by God actually. So why sung by the God? Because God is the full of knowledge and he is given this knowledge to us. The Bhagavad Gita is the most important text in Hindu culture. Why? Because this Grantha, this, this scripture is the only we know when it is born, means when this knowledge is come uh, came in the world. See, when Gita is uh, told to Ar Arjuna, means uh, the Gita knowledge is passed to Arjuna by the Bhagavan Sri Krishna. That exactly that we knows. Only this Grantha, we knows the origin date. Other Grantha, we are not sure, we are just known the centuries. But these Granthas proper, we say normal, um, nowadays we are celebrating the birthdays. 
so we know the gita's birthday also and each uh, year we are celebrating gita's birthday known as a gita jayanti when it comes so gita jayanti is in a margashish which is the indian uh, cal who is the following indian calendar they known the uh, the month of margashirsha in margashirsha month there is a ekadashi ekadashi means 11th day of the margashirsha so that ekadashi known as a mokshada ekadashi why mokshada ekadashi because that day only uh, sri krishna gave the knowledge to the arjuna means the knowledge appear in the world on the mokshada ekadashi so it is too much important and too much famous uh, grantha in a hindu culture okay now we know the uh, this is the dialogue between krishna and arjuna but who give this knowledge from arjuna to the world it is not only uh, remain with arjuna it is give, means we always uh, everyone know about this knowledge it is given by the maharshi veda vyasa we know the uh, maharshi veda vyasa written the grantha mahabharata in the mahabharatas 23rd to means mahabharata there is a 18th um, parvas are there mahabharat it is a most means this is the one of not one this is the biggest um, uh, grantha in hindu culture in this uh, grantha there are 18 parvas are there uh, parvas means it is like a adhyaya chapters so 18 chapters are there and in this 18 chapter chapter there is the sixth chapter known as a bhishma parva this bhishma parva 23rd to 14 chapter we uh, know the knowledge of a bhagavad gita so bhagavad gita means mahabharata is uh, written by uh, veda vyasa means veda vyasa dictate and uh, ganesha ji was a uh, written the mahabharata but the knowledge uh, is a uh, passing by the veda vyasa so we know the author of mahabharata is a uh, veda vyasa so veda vyasa is the uh, author of mahabharata and in mahabharata bhishma parva is there and in this bhishma parva there are 23rd to 14th uh, chapter is there those are the given the knowledge of bhagavad gita now this bhagavad gita we consider as a smriti prasthana of vedanta darshan vedanta darshan we known another name also is there is somebody known that another name of vedanta darshan smriti prasthana is there but i am asking only vedanta darshan we have Sorry. seen six uh, darshanas are there Shardha Uttarmi Mamsa. Ha, Uttarmi right. Uttarmi Mamsa means Vedanta Darshana. In this Vedanta Darshana means this is known as a Smruti Prasthana. And Bhagavad Gita is one of the Smruti Prasthana. Bhagavad Gita is a, in Smruti Prasthana, we know there are a, so many Granthas are there. But from this Smriti Prasthana, Adi Shankaracharya gave an independent uh, recognition to the Bhagavad Gita. Why it is happening? Because uh, uh, this Shankaracharya is studying uh, Vedas. And when he realized the Vedas are too much and uh, the people, which is a general people, are not able to read this much knowledge and they are not able to gain the knowledge. After some years, the knowledge will uh, not remain in the world. So there is a means limitation will be there. So he started divide Veda into the Upanishada. We know the main Upanishadas, 10 Upanishadas are the Mukya Upanishadas, which studied by the uh, Shankaracharya. 
means that is not only 10 uh, Upanishads is uh, study uh, Shankaracharya is studied. He studied a lot of, but he mentioned that is the 10 Upanishads are there. And for this 10 Upanishad, we have to follow the Prasthana Trai. See, what is the Prasthana Trai? Prasthana Trai means three uh, guided books in uh, for our life. Prasthana and Trai. Prasthana means a journey. Which journey is this? This journey is our life journey from our birth towards the moksha. This is a prasthana and trahi means a three. Means how we are uh, traveling on the um, highway, there is a toll nakas are there, uh, toll station are there. We have to pay there and then we are moving uh, forward. So like this, these three uh, texts are over the toll of our life. Means they are given uh, us the knowledge how to live the life and move forward. First comes Upanishad. Upanishad, we know the word meaning of Upanishad. Upa means to sit near to someone and gain the knowledge. Then Bhagavad Gita, we know as a, is a Shruti Granta, means those, uh, this uh, Upanishad known as a Shruti Granta. Shruti means to listen, only to listen. And uh, the Bhagavad Gita is a Smruti, means which we listen, we have to recall that things. And the last one comes Brahma Sutra. Brahma Sutra is known as a Nyaya Darshan, means which do's and not do, means don't do's. This Brahma Sutra is given us the knowledge which is the right and which is the wrong. Here is a small trick. To keep in mind this three grantha means to remember the prasthana three. As I told, prasthana three means uh, uh, to follow, means to guide us to how to live our life. So we have to cut our life in the three part. Which three part? Which is uh, our um, uh, when we are the small kids up to the eighteenth, we are uh, kids. Then 18 to 14th or 50, age of 50, we are the elder, younger. And after 50 or 60, we are considered as an old person, senior citizen. Same like this, up to the 18, we have to listen our parents, our children, I means our, our teachers. And we are always keeping in mind what is teacher is given, uh, teaches us. Then when we are in a college life and when we are moving forward, forward, we are always remembering that my teacher uh, in the in this standard, my teacher punished me and she teach me this one because I was the wrong. This is the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is yeah. No problem. I will share uh, after the whole uh, Bhagavad Gita uh, completed, then I will share the slides. I will uh, miss now you are requesting. My request is there to you people. When we join the class, please write down the short notes, live notes. It will help you to um, uh, remember fast thing. So do one thing. When you uh, take a uh, paper or a book, there are two margins. Upper side margin is there and uh, uh, down margin is there. Upper side margin, you are writing the um, uh, topic name. And uh, when uh, we are the kids, that time we are writing question and answer in the margin. In that margin, just write down your doubt. When you are going to re um, re revise this uh, topic, you will get that oh, I have this doubt. Then please search that doubt. And if you are, there is the, no doubt, you are getting the answer of that question, just mark it. OK, this is a, uh, a trick for the quick study. Daily, take the notes. If you have doubt, just write down in the margin. After the class, you will ask me, means you can ask me, I will answer you. If 
you are satisfied with my answer is okay otherwise you go with one time uh, this recording and again you are not uh, satisfied with the answer directly uh, inform me yeah directly talk with me i will try to uh, solve, I mean, solve your problem so moving forward yeah. upanishad and bhagavad gita we know the bhagavad gita means uh, how to uh, do the work when you we are doing any work we are recalling that in school yeah when i am doing this my parents my uh, elder sister my elder brother who is the elder one in the uh, house uh, surrounding our now uh, even the relatives also they are guided us when we are the kids don't do this don't do that you have to do uh, means uh, this way follow the uh, good things all this comes in upanishad but when we are becoming younger we are moving forward we are uh, in a hostel life that time we are recalling the my mother is saying this my father guided me every time anything this is known as a bhagavad gita means we have to recall the, what we learned in the uh, past then when after marriage we have um, having kids and then we uh, guided them uh, like uh, you should not do this you have to follow the good way this is known as a brahma sutra so this is known as a smriti prasthana this prayatna uh, prasthana tray known as a smriti prasthan i think uh, prasthana tray you know now very well so moving forward see bhagavad gita there is a so many names are there bhagavad gita means 18 name are there bhagavad gita but bhagavad gita known as a upanishad also why upanishad also because it's a part of vedanta darshana then it is a brahma vidya and yoga shastra why we say this is a upanishad brahma vidya and yoga shastra because when we read bhagavad gita each and every chapter end with one shloka in this shloka it mentioned that bhagavad gita is a uh, upanishad brahma vidya and yoga shastra the shloka is hari om tat sat shrimad bhagavad gita supanishastu brahma vidyayam yoga shastra shri krishna arjuna samvade then comes adhyas name and it's a samapta okay so we known this the bhagavad gita is a um, known as a upanishad brahma uh, brahma vidya and yoga darshan actually um, uh, this gita is not a only one gita in uh, mahabharata in mahabharata there are around nine gita is there different different gita is there what is uh, in that gita this gita uh, means there like a biography there is a first gita known as a pingala gita pingala gita means uh, the bio uh, how the life is, uh, is a uh, means how this um, sex worker is there of pingala uh, names uh, his song uh, sing a song and he um, just um, express his um, uh, emotion about his life uh, tragedy in this gita known as a uh, in that git there is uh, in that song that is known as a pingala gita then there is a manaki gita manaki gita is uh, all information about our farmer then there is a bauddha gita bauddha gita is the yogi's life then vichunaka gita vichunaka gita is a means a life of a king how he is suffering how when he is taking the decision it is a uh, hard for his life, uh, family and uh, with a family and his decision how the king is suffering we know uh, means king is a powerful person but in his personal life he is also suffering from the sorrow so this gita is a, all gitas there are uh, some sorrows are there so when um, bishma acharya uh, known about this gita they are very sad and they uh, request krishna ki uh, krishna 
every gita there is only sorrow then we, uh, our duty is to spread happiness in the world not a sorrow so do something and give the knowledge, proper knowledge and the people uh, solve their problem own do something for it that time krishna promised bishmacharya bishmacharya means the pitama bishma so uh, he promised bishmacharya that i will work it and i will uh, do for his uh, suggestion then uh, when uh, arjuna is in saro uh, in the battlefield of uh, kurukshetra that time he remember the word of uh, bishmacharya and then he give the knowledge of uh, uh, arjuna which knowledge the dharma knowledge means uh, duty what you have to do and what you should not do the gita is just guided us so it is known as a guide also so here gita uh, means uh, krishna is uh, guided to arjuna where uh, given uh, advice arjuna it is on the battlefield of the kurukshetra why battle is there it is the for the justice it is a form of dharma see the battlefield of kurukshetra known as a dharma kshetra kurukshetra and this dharma kshetra mentioned by the dhritarashtra the king of a hastinapur and this battle is between the kaurava and pandava kaurava means the son of dhritarashtra and pandava means the son of dhritarashtra's brother pandu even uh, dhritarashtra known that his kids means his son is uh, doing a wrong they are not a dharmi he knows this thing very well so in the first shloka of bhagavad gita dhritarashtra mentioned that dharma kshetra kuru kshetra he is asking to sanjaya sanjaya is a, is a uh, guide person because he was a blind so he is not uh, able to see anything but he uh, is a king means he have to rule the whole uh, his kingdom the uh, uh, sanjaya uh, appointed uh, to guide um, uh, to the dhritarashtra what is uh, the happening in front of him in short sanjaya is the eyes of a dhritarashtra we can say like this so sanjaya um, every time uh, always with a um, uh, dhritarashtra is uh, which happening uh, in the um, uh, sabha he just uh, given whole description to dhritarashtra so now when this battle is there uh, dhritarashtra wants to see means uh, curious, uh, curious about the uh, battlefield what is happening on the battlefield he wants to know that one so uh, San, uh, he asked to sanjaya and this sanjaya uh, get the war means uh, power which we known as a vibhuti to uh, see behind the uh, room yeah, everything uh, what is he is able to see from the battlefield so he is explaining what is happening on the uh, battlefield he is just uh, in a curiosity uh, dhritarashtra and he is asked to sanjaya please sanjaya tell me what is happening on the dharma kshetra kurukshetra kurukshetra is a place still is in the haryana uh, rajya state in haryana state so this kurukshetra known as a dharma kshetra because the battle is in the dharmi and adharmi means good we say the good people and bad people kaurava and pandava then this gita uh, is an i know, told you gita known as the soul of indian literature why it is indian literature it guided us and it is a knowledge given by the krishna so it is a soul of uh, indian uh, literature uh, yoga literature also according to uh, some scholar this book is the essence of uh, upanishad 
see this uh, gita is the only one uh, grantha who is, means on this grantha there are so many commentator uh, done the study each and every language is it is a trans, uh, translated as per uh, the scholar knowledge if i am talking about the marathi because i am a marathi in marathi major three uh, granthas are there which is a commentary of a uh, bhagavad gita we everybody knows the naneshwar naneshwar written naneshwari naneshwari is a marathi version of a gita then uh, we know the lokmanya tilak lokmanya tilak also written uh, gita rahasya what is a gita rahasya it is also commentary of the uh, gita and the vinoba bhave he uh, feel uh, vinoda bhave no, written the gita in marathi and he named that gita e means gita is a mother why it is a mother because it is given us whole knowledge even this uh, uh, guru of vivekananda ramakrishna paramahansa he uh, every time uh, used to say that gita means those who is reading gita that becomes a tyagi gita makes us uh, make us tyagi why tyagi when we uh, write a gita we don't do the opposite word ta gi and ta gi it is a upabrunsh we known as that is a gita so uh, ramakrishna paramahansa always say read gita without gita you are not becoming a tyagi and this tyagi means sacrifice, uh, sacrifice. if you are no uh, sacrifice uh, means if you are gain you want to gain something you have to sacrifice something so read always a gita this is the okay moving forward now content of bhagavad gita content of bhagavad gita means we are no the information of the bhagavad gita how many uh, shlokas are there how many adhyayas are there and the, how many adhyaya uh, arjuna have the query means questioning to the krishna and krishna krishna is answering to the uh, arjuna we know the only two speaker uh, in a gita but if we read uh, gita properly there are uh, four uh, speakers are there who is the four speaker we will see see bhagavad gita has 700 shlokas here so in english we are calling verses but we are using sanskrit words because so many times they are not uh, in examination they are just using the word shloka so it is this no I mean, distribute in 18 adhyayas adhyaya means chapter how patanjali is uh, known as a pada like this it is a chapter in geran sahita is a upadesha each and every uh, text there are a different name so here is a adhyaya this is dialogue between krishna and arjuna but I mentioned there are four speakers are there. Who is another two? It is a Sanjaya and Dhritarashtra. Why Sanjaya and Dhritarashtra is added? Because Krishna wants this knowledge give to whole world. It is not remain with the Arjuna. So he wants to this knowledge pass to all the world. So he introduced Sanjaya and Dhritarashtra. Sanjaya is able to see what is happening in uh, the battlefield, on the battlefield. And he just explaining that uh, actions and that things to the Dhritarashtra. So there are uh, uh, Sri Krishna uh, shlokas are there, 574 shlokas are there in Bhagavad Gita. Then 85 shlokas for Arjuna. 40 shloka of Sanjaya and only one shloka of Dhritarashtra, which is the started shloka. Whereas Gita is starting with Dhritarashtra's uh, curiosity and Dhritarashtra's question. That is a Dhritarashtra Uvacha. See, here is a 700 shloka. 
Each and every shloka, we are not going to do study. Only major and important shloka, we are going to do the study. So uh, this, as per our text, I mentioned only the shloka is here. OK, and if you feel uh, I am missing something, please inform me. Now we are moving forward. Definition of yoga. In Bhagavad Gita, there are three main definitions of yoga. How many definitions are there? Main three definitions are there. So uh, this definition, we have to buy it with the shloka's number. Not only the shloka, its meaning and the number of adhyaya and number of the shloka. In examination, they will ask, match the following. Saib, they are given only shlok. And another uh, section, they are given only the number. Not only definition, they are given another uh, definition of um, yogas in, from the another text also. But even that uh, definition or uh, number of uh, adhyaya and shloka, we have to recite that things here you know second chapter second chapter name is sankhya yoga so in sankhya yoga he mentioned samatvam yoga uchati here i mentioned you know small because today you just keep mind in these four uh, three words another there is a uh, when we are moving forward in our class we know the four, two line sloka is there so we have to buy the complete shloka. It is very easy when you cut in a small, small pieces. It is easy to recite and to remember this shloka. So first shloka is a samatvam yoga uchyate. Samatvam yoga uchyate means yoga is a equanimity. It is comes in the second adhyaya, second chapter of a Bhagavad Gita and a 48 shloka. Means uh, 48 uh, shloka, which is the uh, second adhyas, 48 shloka. The, the second definition, yoga, karma, su, kaushala. Yoga is a skill in action. Skill in action means those work. Action means work. Which work we are doing with a perfectly. That is not known as a skill. And when we gain the skill, with a basa, we are gaining the skill. Means when we repeated one thing, one action, one work, so many times, that we are becoming master in that work. That is the skill. Now what is yoga say? Yoga is a skill in action. It is a shloka of second chapters, 15th shloka is there. And the third definition is there, tam vidya, Dukkha Sain Yoga, Vyogam Yoga Sanjitam. It means detachment from the misery causes by attachment is known as a yoga. See, because of this attachment the, uh, is a root of our sorrow. So from this uh, attachment, we have to do detach. With the Patanjali Sutra is there, Asmita Raga, Avidya Asmita Raga. This Raga means attachment. And because of this attachment, we are uh, in a sorrow. So we, when we detach with the uh, attachment, we are that is known as a yoga. This three definition and the shloka and the adhyayana name, we have to always keep in the mind. Now there is a name of the 18th chapter, means 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. This is a chapter names. Sometimes they are asking, the uh, even the fill in the blanks, they are asking this uh, chapter. And they're just mentioning that uh, fifth chapter of Gita. Then we have to remember fifth chapter of Gita is a Karma Sanyasa Yoga. So this name, we have to recall and buy this name. So there is a trick. Uh, today, uh, you try to remember. If you are not able to uh, remember, I will tomorrow I will give you the trick. Today, we will see the just 
name of the this no, adhyayas first adhyay is a arjuna vishad yog arjuna is the prince and he is in a saro why is he in a saro actually he is no, ready for the battle uh, to fight against the other me against the kaurava but in suddenly he is in a saro why the uh, that whole uh, reason and the vernon is in the uh, this first chapter is there in this chapter there is a um, they are mentioning the battlefield they are mentioning the um, uh, those uh, warrior come for, for the um, uh, battle for the fight each and everything the before the uh, fighting the uh, varnan is here in you know, arjuna vishad then second chapter is a sankhya yoga sankhya means a knowledge sama knowledge good knowledge sankhya means then third comes karma yoga karma means work we have to do work after work, uh, karma yoga fourth chapter known as a jnana karma sanyasa sanyasa is a one type of a detachment so jnana karma sanyasa yoga is a fourth chapter fifth chapter comes karma sanyasa karma sanyasa means we have to detach from our uh, karma also sixth chapter comes atma sayama yoga atma means our atma self internal uh, power our eternal power and we have to control that that is a atma sayama then seventh chapter is a gyana vigyana yoga gyana vigyana vigyana uh, jnana means knowledge and vigyana means our um, the power we can say jnana vigyana vigyana means the science we can say the reason uh, behind it then uh, eighth chapter comes uh, akshara brahma is, here is the uh, knowledge of a brahma with a akshara which akshara is here introduced om so akshara brahma then ninth chapter is raja vidya raja guya no raja vidya raja guya guya means a secret knowledge okay ninth chapter is raja vidya raja guya after raja vidya raja guya the tenth chapter is a vibhuti yoga we know the vibhuti vibhuti means a power special power of the uh, 10th chapter is a vibhuti yoga 11th chapter is there vishva roop darshan vishva means the world and darshan means we are able to see the world, how is the world is there we know there is the yat prindi tat brahmandi then what is a pind and what is the brahman here is not a pind but here is a brahman what is the brahmand then uh, 12th chapter is a bhagavad uh, bhakti yoga sorry bhakti we know the uh, ishwar paridhana in uh, patanjali yoga sutra that is a bhakti means a surrender to the god love to the god 13th is a kshetra kshetradna vibhaga yoga kshetra means now we say the part uh and the kshetradnya who is the owner of the part vibhag you the 14th chapter name is a guna traya vibhag traya means th uh, three and a guna is a our mm -hmm. what do we say the guna quality 15th is a purushottam vibhag you purush uttam uttam means a good purush then uh, uh, 16th chapter uh, comes in daivasura sampada vibhaga yoga daivasura sampada sampada means a power the wealth sampada which sampada daiva and asura daiva asura daiva means a dev god and asura means we know the rakshasa means a good and a bad wealth we are we divided the wealth in the two part daiva asura then 17th chapter is a shraddha traya vibhaga yoga again traya is here traya means three 
Shraddha means a faith. Three types of faith is there. How the three types of gunas are there? Gunas here the guna means sattva guna, raja guna, and tamo guna. We are divided guna in three parts. Same like that, we are divided our faith in three parts. This is a shraddha traya vibhag. And after shraddha traya, it is a moksha sannyasa, which is the last chapter of a Bhagavad Gita. So, I think today you have to mm, means homework of these uh, two things. I had the shloka name of uh, shloka, uh, number of uh, shloka, and number of adhyaya, uh, which is uh, comes in the definition of yoga. And try to remember this 18th name, uh, this name of the adhyayas. There are 18 names, or different uh, 18 adhyaya. Keep in, uh, means try to read two or three times. You are able to recall these things. Yeah, we will stop here. If you have any problem, we are discussing here. Okay, the remaining part we will conduct tomorrow. Uh, Didi, uh, is it possible to discuss at this moment few questions uh, regarding uh, which topic we have covered today? Yes. Yeah, thank you, Didi. Yeah.